This video will show you how to do some statistical analysis on your graph and data. I did a previous video where I showed how we actually gathered that data in the Vernier video analysis app. If you want to just get a quick review of how I clicked those points and what that looked like, I'm framing forward and I have the trails turned on so you can see where I centered the crosshairs at each frame. Now, one thing that I can do is go up to this menu item here, view options. And I'm done with the video, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off. The data table, too, is something that I'm not going to be too concerned with at the moment. I really want to focus on the graph. You've got an option here to show one or two graphs. It's going to show the velocity graph by default below. I'm going to focus on the position graph at this time. So I'll go to one graph. If you click in the graph and then drag this line, you can analyze each data point and see exactly where the position fell. And since this ball was falling in the vertical direction, I'm really interested in analyzing that motion. So I'm going to click over here on the left and turn off the X data set. There wasn't too much interesting going on there anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and close that analysis line. And a couple of things to note. By default, your graph will be zoomed to your data. So what I mean by that is the, the data kind of fills the screen. One thing I would highly recommend is actually going into the graph options down here in the lower left and opening up edit graph options. The y-axis range is something that you definitely want to take a look at. I always recommend for my students that you be able to see the origin of the graph, the zero value on the graph. And there are a couple ways to do that. I can go ahead and just click here and type zero. Or there's some scaling options, one of which is to always show zero. Right now it's just going automatic, which zooms to the data. Manual scaling would require you to type in your bottom and top value. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in a value for each of these. I'm going to start it at zero, and the graph adjusted automatically. I don't know if you can see that in the background. And I like to have kind of nice round numbers. For this, I'm going to go ahead and type in 2.5, meaning 2.5 meters. The x-axis is my time axis. I'm okay with it running from 0 to 0 0.5. I just think setting the 0 point helps us see that I dropped the ball from a height of about 2 meters, a little bit higher than 2 meters based on where I set my 0 point. I would ask my students, first of all, to look at the shape of the graph and try to figure out what type of relationship we have here. Linear is most common, but we can clearly see a curve to this data, which we would expect because the ball is accelerating as it falls. So I want to do a little data analysis on this graph. And one way to do that is to click and drag over certain data points. Or if you just leave it, and go to graph options again and go to apply curve fit if you click on that it's going to try to bring in a curve fit and the default is actually a linear fit for your data and you can see that that's not a great fit it's not really following the curve of the data very well if i click the drop down menu here if i think the graph is parabolic i want to use quadratic relationship you have a bunch of different options that may come into play with different relationships that you might analyze. When I click quadratic, I can see that it actually is quite a good fit to the data. This is where things get really useful. When you click apply, you get a box of information related to that data. So it's saying that the general form here is quadratic y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And it's giving me my values for a, b, and C. This actually turned out really good. My A value is right at about negative 4.9. If you know some physics, that first coefficient is one half of the acceleration of the object. Because this object's in free fall, I would expect the acceleration to be negative 9.8 meters per second per second, and half of that is negative 4.9. So this is actually a really good data set. Now just to show you what a linear fit might look like, I'm going to go over to the X position data, and I'll turn off the Y position data. Now, this is actually a good learning point here. It's still trying to do a quadratic fit. And if you just looked at it, it did kind of sort of follow that data. This is a point where, again, you want to look at your scale. What this is doing is taking that X position data 
and making it fill the screen. But notice everything's right around 0 0.65, 0 0.66, 0 0.67. So this is a case where you would definitely want to go to your graph options and set a more reasonable scale. So the y-axis range is that horizontal position. Like I said, I always like to see position zero. So I'll delete that. And my top value, I'm gonna bring it up to one meter. And then you can see when you zoom out from that data that looked like it was wildly fluctuating, that really it's not wildly fluctuating at all. It's basically a horizontal line because the ball fell straight downward. It wasn't moving left or right. So a couple of things I could do with the data in my uh, graph options here. Um, this is one where I'm not so interested in doing a linear fit, but let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. If I go to curve fit, again, the default is linear, and I see that I get a, an equation in the form y equals mx plus b. m is the slope. And this is essentially a horizontal line, so the slope is pretty close to zero. So it doesn't have a huge amount of meaning there. Now my B value is where that roughly straight line hits the position axis. And it's right around 0.6576. That's that kind of roughly constant horizontal position that it has because it's not moving left or right. So another thing you can choose down here in the lower left is statistics. Now this is one where I might actually get something useful. If I really think that the ball fell straight downward, I'm assuming that that x position is one flat value that maybe fluctuates a little bit just due to data collection sampling error. And so the mean value might be of interest to me here. Mean x position as it fell was right around 0.67 meters. It will also give you the standard deviation and show you the minimum and maximum values. And you can see that that's a pretty small range of values. So that is a brief introduction to some of the graph analysis tools in the Vernier Video Analysis app. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I will follow this up with a video that will guide you through some tips in actually recording your video on an iPhone. If you're finding these videos helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel, share it with other students and teachers, and as always, thank you for watching.